All right. And everyone listening in, welcome, welcome to another episode of Day One's Founder Stories. I'm Andrew Hutton. I'm the founder and CEO of Day One. And I have uh, with me uh, our a guest, Day One fellow, founder of a company called Possible, startup called Possible, David Chase. So David, thank you so much for being with us today. Really appreciate yeah. you taking some time. Of course. Thanks for having, uh, uh, thanks for having me and for sharing my story. Absolutely. I mean, this is what we love to do. Um, you were in our second cohort. Do yeah. I have that right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, my brain is turning to mush with how many um, fellows have come through now. Thank you for correcting me um, or helping me out there. And uh, and yeah, I, it was so fun to watch you go through your journey of getting possible off the ground. Do you mind uh, maybe helping us kind of start from the beginning for folks who are listening in? What is possible and how did like you get into this? Like what's some of your journey story to going from what I do know was sort of your career into launching this, uh, this startup? Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, um, yeah, I think the background of possible. So what it, what it does and then giving some of the background. So possible, it's basically a four week program, um, to help people explore different careers in tech, um, in a practical way. So if you're like unsure of what you want to do next, which I think is a lot of people in life, um, or you are interested in tech or a few roles and functions in tech, but you don't know which one or how to validate that. Um, you know, really what exists now is, is ways to pursue a path. And there's a lot of really good training for, Hey, you know, you want to be a UX designer. How do you go out do that? Like there's amazing programs for that, but for kind of upstream on the decision component of how do I choose the career path I want to do really difficult and unstructured, lonely. Um, and, and frankly, like I would say poor, poorly done right now. Um, most people are figuring out what they want to do through job descriptions, which is like not a good way to learn what you want. Actually yeah, someone's want selling that. to you and yeah, that that's so opaque. Um, do you do you end up targeting a specific or like piece of the life cycle? I know we're like digging into the idea here and I want to hear your story, but like, is this for college students or is this for like mid-career switchers or how do you think about that? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so I think the best way to say this is there's sort of two different types of career explorer. Um, the first is the person seeking exposure. So it's like, I don't know anything about tech or I know a little bit, but I, I want to know more and I want to get like real people who have actually done this and I want to try it really and get a sense of it, but not pay $10,000 for a boot camp for it. Um, and then there are people who are really seeking more of like affirmation. Like, I think I want to be a product manager, but I'm not hundred percent sure. How do I validate before I spend $10,000 on the boot camp or go down years of my life committing to this path? Um, so what I found is that most people, I think like possible is built more for the exposure folks. Like you can definitely gain value from affirmation, but I think if you're only seeking affirmation in one career path, it might not be the best program for you. Um, people who are seeking exposure can be in college. They could be early in their career. I mean, I've had 45 year olds like join. I think it it is probably best for early to mid career. Like I'm most people cluster in the twenties and thirties. Um, but you know, a lot of people who have come to like have signed up for the wait list are people who have like made the wrong career choice, which is sad. Um, because it's like, they're really not trying to repeat the same mistakes that they made the first time. Um, which was sort of, which is usually that they didn't choose at all. Um, someone else chose for them. Right. Right. Um, they fell into it. Someone chose for them. Yeah. Wow. So how did you get into this? Like, give me a little bit of your backstory in terms of what you, were you doing beforehand? And even, you know, how did that lead to this? Like, what were some of the formative moments in your career and your journey that said like, this is the thing for me to solve and how did that sort of transition happen? Yeah. Um, so I'd say there are two to three stories within that, but let's start with the first is um, my own journey, which like, um, started my career at Microsoft in marketing, product marketing, um, really had a great kind of life, <laughs> very comfortable. Uh, I was pretty good at it, um, had a lot of friends and um, was growing in my career. And then I got, uh, I had like a health issue and it's sort of, I think I just hit a point where I was like, okay, 
I really want to like kind of let this, I, I've always thought of myself as having like a spiritual side and an ambitious side. And uh, the ambitious side has always sort of driven what I've done in life. And the spiritual side was just like kind of coming out with this health thing. And I uh, decided that like, I wanted to buy a van and live in it. This sort of like pre-van I mean, it was van days, van life was sort of becoming a thing, but it wasn't huge yet. Um, and I did it in 2016. I quit, I quit, or I got a leave of absence at Microsoft actually. Um, and I jumped in a van for like four months and lived in it. Uh, and I thought, Hey, this is what, this is going to teach me what I want to do in life. You know, I, I think, you know, I was exploring, but I was exploring myself more than I was exploring careers. I think it was, it was a naive thought, but I really didn't think that much about it, right? Like I was like, I'm going to figure out what I want to do when I'm in this van. I don't know what I want. And, you know, I think I came out of that and it went from, you know, me being sort of this like free spirited self traveling the country to me being in my parents' house, searching for a job um, and not doing that effectively. Um, and so I think there was like a defining moment during that where I had uh, a mentor of mine who basically told me there are three types of job searchers and I can help two of them and you're the person I can't help. It was like pretty brutal. Um, I was three months into my job search. So you can imagine like, wow, I've messed up for three months, but it was basically what he said was the first job searcher I can help is this person I don't who doesn't know anything and is just exploring and is like, I'm curious about tech or I'm curious about product management, um, venture capital. And, you know, they're just, they're looking to learn. The second person you could help is a person who knew exactly what they wanted. Like, I know I want to be a content marketer at a startup. Um, ideally early stage startup, whatever. Um, and then the person you couldn't help was me who like wanted a job, but didn't know what I wanted. And I think that was like the first moment in my brain of like, the career explorer and realizing like I was a career explorer and embracing the exploration of like, I don't actually know what I want yet. And, you know, we are accustomed in society to really push people into a job, but not train them on what exists. And I think that that kind of disparate feeling really kind of came into clarity at that moment and allowed me to explore. And I moved into the education space, which was really always where I wanted I've had passion. So I went into ed tech and I guess that kind of leads to the second reason I started this. So, you know, I, I found myself in adult learning for the first time after a lot of K, I, I worked in K through 12, uh, ed tech, and I found myself in the adult learning space. And a lot of these boot camps. I was talking to the founders and CEOs and I realized like one, how awesome adult learning is. It's like a free for all and really innovative kind of um, doesn't have the same constraints as the K through 12 world, but, you know, they were getting a lot of people who are like intro to coding and they, people would come and they were me. They were the career explorer that didn't really know what existed, but had heard of coding. And then the minute they got into that event, they were getting sold as a lead to convert at the lowest cost possible. And I'm a marketer. So I really get that. Like, I understand, like you have to convert the leads that you get. But I just kept thinking like those people don't even know what exists, like how well, they're getting sold, they're not getting educated. And I like what, ha what would happen if we built a program that allowed people to understand what exists prior to them going down a boot camp route. So uh, yeah, that was sort of that. What was the, um, what was the, like walk us up to the moment where like possible became real, right? Like that's one of the things that a lot of founders that every founder goes through this moment of, man, this idea, this potential, like you gave us like a really strong sense of why this is you and you seem like the right person to be doing this. But like, what was that moment of conviction looking like? Like from the fear of jumping in to the, to the quitting of the job, like <laughs> how did that go for you? Yeah. To go from not founder to founder of possible. Yeah. Uh, I think it's always like evolving. Um, but I think the moment I sort of didn't get the slow burn, which in, in retrospect, I think made it challenging in some ways. Like, I think like I got really quick validation, which is great in some ways, but in other ways has put kind of like a ceaseless pressure to, <laughs> to be ahead of where I actually was. So I guess the story is, um, 
I, I was doing like a contract role um, with an early stage founder last year. Um, that was really how I got into the adult learning space. And at the end of the year, I kind of realized like I want to start my own thing, but I wasn't quite at the point of like, I'm going to go all in. So I got another contract role that was like sort of light um, and allowed me to explore. And then in February, um, I had this post, I was sort of building the possible website. I had this LinkedIn post that went super viral. Um, and it's not the first one that I've had that went viral, but this one was kind of different, I think, in terms of like, I, you know, I had something that I wanted to share with people and there were you know, it's something like 10, 15, 20,000 people who are going to my LinkedIn profile. And I was like, oh, I should, people were messaging me and like, what are you building? And, you know, it's like, I didn't have a website yet. So I just posted a broken website. I mean, it was really broken, like links everywhere broken. Uh, and it was sort of like, okay, well, like maybe somebody will sign up for the wait list. And uh, I think at that time, like 50 people signed up for the wait list. And I, at that point I was like, okay, you know, I, I haven't even done anything yet. And people are really like opting in to being that person and started to use that as customer discovery. So um, yeah, I mean, I think the good part about that was quick validation and like even in conversations with colleges, like they also really understand the idea. Um, on the other side, like I was, I had no product. I hadn't even built the website. So now people have a, are showing me they have the need, but I can't deliver. And I think that's been, always like a source of some frustration <laughs> that's uh that's real talk i appreciate you sharing it just like that and i think that's really admirable the way you just like followed your nose i mean your 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 intuition was leading you there but then people started to pick up the thread and like you said just dming you and and reaching out and then eventually joining a wait list um when you have that wave but then i feel you like the pressure of like wow this is here now startups take a lot longer than you expect, right? Anytime you're like, okay, that was amazing. I'm going to be off to the races. No <laughs> time, right? Yeah. And uh, so that leads me to my next question, which, which is what would you say in your, um, so if I have the timeline right, that was in the beginning of this year and now we're getting into the late summer, which is wild and it's going to be the fall. So it's been north of half a year, um, but there was a long time before that too, while it was kind of percolating. But in this, maybe like this season of 2021, what have been some of the bigger challenges or hurdles that, that you've had to face? So in these early stages, whether it's like big picture kind of mindset, like you said, the sort of like kind of like dissonance of how fast you should be going versus how fast you are going, yeah. or even just like really tactical, right? Like, yeah. man, it's hard to, you know, convert these waitlist people to pay, whatever it might be. Like, what are yeah. some of the things you face as, as an early, early stage founder? Yeah. Um... I think the first one is an expectation of how long something takes versus what it actually takes. I mean, I, I really cannot emphasize enough. Like I had no idea what the product actually looked like. I understood the problem in February. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't even start working on the product. Like, you know, until the, I, I was starting kind of like side slow, like the slow burn is actually really important important and I think I just didn't really think about like hey it takes time to to really refine an idea let alone build it let alone then like validate that that's interesting to somebody let alone you know and there's every single step has a question that you have to answer so the first question is do you have an idea the second question is like does that idea resonate with anybody? <laughs> the third idea is, you know, now that you figure, the third question is like, now that you figured out that you have an idea and a problem, is this something that you can actually build? And then is the what you're actually building resonate with somebody, you know? And so there's just like every single step. Now can you get people to sign up? And I think I just never had the ability to slowly build up there. I sort of had like, okay, this idea resonates. Now I have to deliver. And I just couldn't do that as a solo founder in the time frame that I wanted, which I think is really the other challenge is you just have to do so many different things that, um, you know, design a website on Webflow is like its own challenge to learn. And then, you know, making sure you have a payment link and integrating with Stripe and then, you know, all the operational components and setting up a business. Like I didn't know I needed a city business license. Like what the heck is that? 
you know, I think it's just, there's an endless sort of stream of things that stop you from just like getting an idea off the ground. And I always underestimated the time frame that it would take. So I think that was probably my biggest learning lesson. Like I launched too early. Um, I uh, like no doubt in my mind, I should have waited months. You know, now I can say I, I'm like ready to launch, like basically right now. And wow. I like launched back in April, like I announced the idea and it was just unnecessary. I don't think, um, I think it was my own internal timeline and clock that was dictating versus what, you know, what I was, if I was actually ready. And I think that's probably the biggest learning lesson I would give to any founder is like, you're on your own timeline. VCs, you know, trying to tell you, you have to have a certain set of traction or your me just coming from the venture world and having my own internal pressure was like the biggest mistake I made because I just wasn't ready, but I always wanted to be ready. And so I've always had this gap of, you know, trying to get the executional components up to the speed of where I wanted to be versus where I, you know, had out there in the world been. That's so real. That's so real. That like little quip of it's going to take you longer. You felt that it happens. And I like that you brought it home of like, you don't have to launch so early. Right. Um, and the, those elements of like putting some of those ducks in a row, like building some of that infrastructure, building some of that product, Right. Um, which is interesting because people will talk about a lot today of like, yeah, just go sell it and then make it after people buy it. And it's like the right way to do it. Cause you don't know if you have an audience it's, it's a little bit of a catch 22 because you did that almost to a T really well. You had people like sharing that viral article, you had people signing up to a wait list. You sold them on the first instantiation of the product, but still like you got overwhelmed and it took longer. And yeah, I mean, I had people who literally said, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll pay for it. You know? And I was like, I'm not going to sell something I don't have. I think that, you know, the truth is everything, all the advice that you get is sort of like re requires context and nuance but like the distribution is more important than product is i think frankly kind of bad advice <laughs> like you know it's important to validate that people give a shit but the more important thing is like if you can't actually val like deliver on that validation then you're building distribution prior to actually being able to sell your idea i think that that <laughs> happened to me and you know i think it's just you you have to recognize that like some people who have that might have 10 million dollars to go you know quickly build the thing build that the thing yeah, yeah, I, yeah i'm building this by myself and so i think when you're building something by yourself it takes 10x the, you know it's if you don't real. have 10 people it takes 10x the amount of time that you think it will and so i think that is you know there is no easier way to build than if you have a team if you don't have a team, you need to make sure you have like the timeline that supports that. So real. And it's also, there's that like, you know, build, test, learn is this, is this great adage, but at the same time, um, like you can validate the problem, but you don't know, like you said, if they really want the solution and you're almost certainly going to be wrong the first time you put it there. So you're going to have to iterate a hundred times. You're going to have to have bandwidth to iterate. You're going to have to, and, and yeah, and if you don't build it and then test that people want the thing, you're not really anywhere, right? You're, you're in this sort of, you're in that like false positive trap, which is gonna, which, which kind of sucks because you just yeah. invested chunks of time in, in your life and energy and money. Um, okay, last question for you, David, sure. um, which is fast forward to today and you sort of said you're just ready to launch, but bring us into like the life of David right now, building possible. What are you working on? What is the challenge, the hurdle that you're facing? So we've talked about how you started. We talked about like the middle, but like today, what's happening? Like, are you, yeah. where, where are you chopping wood? And if a listener heard this in a few weeks time, which will be present when they hear it, yeah. could somebody reach out to you being like, oh, I want to help David with that. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, so I think there are a few different things I'm working on. One is I've been really focused on product. So I, I was, I would say like over-focused on what I was good at, which is marketing. And I, um, maybe not over-focused, but I, I, I had demand, but I didn't have the product. So since then I've sort of like not done demand gen and done only product, like really focused in on building the program and what it's going to look like. And so I'm finally at a point where I'm pretty confident 
in that and what it's going to do. And I'm pretty excited by it. You know, two career coach coaching sessions is basically going to be the cost of possible. Whereas you get, you know, 15 hour plus of events, fireside chats, workshops, like the level of what I think possible will deliver somebody who was me, who, you know, is lost or is searching, I think is going to be really good. And I'm finally excited to like, be able to, to sell that to somebody. And so, yeah, I mean, we're opening up applications this week. Um, so by the time this is live, like that's going to be, it, you're going to be able to apply, which is really awesome. That's real. Yeah. Uh, that's real. Huge. Um, the first uh, cohort will start in September. Um, and I'm really excited about that as well. Like that's an amazing, uh, I, I'm, unfortunately, like we might have this Delta variant. So good time to invest in your career. <laughs> um, Dude thousand percent. Yeah, there's so. there's so much. Um, I mean, I love that you worked on this inside of day one. And if the day one community audience is listening to this and you're not sure what's up, <laughs> go jump over to possible. This is exactly where you can figure yeah. out where your career might take you. Um, that's amazing. So you're live, you're ready, it's happening. And yeah. it's been a journey. It was fast. It was slow. It was everything in between. Yes. And um, I know I've seen some more of your learning curve and what you've been able to accomplish behind the scenes. And it's really quite impressive. So heck with that, we'll round this out. Thanks, David, so much for joining us on another day one founder story. Um, really appreciate you sharing what it's been like, your uh, journey. And is it heypossible.com? Yeah, heypossible.com. Um, check it out. Thank you for having me, Andrew. And uh, Love yeah, it. I mean, it also, I, I might be hiring a community manager um, part-time. So if that's, uh, that's something that's interesting to people, um, that might be uh that would likely be hiring by the time this is over so that's um, huge yeah that's huge well uh hopefully be able to put some links and stuff in the show notes when this when this is live so check that out thanks david this is amazing we'll see you around talk soon bye